did. And yeah. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the English live stream, the live stream that will help you improve your English and take it to the next level. My name's Craig, if this is your first time watching, I'm from the website mansioningles.com and from the podcast inglespodcast.com where you can listen and study for free. And coming up in April, another course, well, more than one course for conversation English. So if you want to improve your speaking, go to the website englishcraig.com You'll find information there. Contact me for a free consultation and I'll tell you the details and the dates of April's courses for speaking practice. And with me today over there, my good friend Lynn, who's joining us today. Hello, Lynn. Hello, How are you doing? Craig. I'm doing really well, actually. Had a nice good to break see you. over fire. So it was really nice and I'm um, raring to go. Yeah. And if for people who are watching, if it's the first time you're watching, um, my name's Lynn. My business is called putitlikethis.com and I'm an online teacher and I specialize in creating um, um, tailor-made courses for you to help you try to find your own voice in English, to do the kind of things that you really need to do in English. Um, most of my classes are not group classes. Most of my classes are one-to-one -one classes. Um, so if you're interested, you can go to my website and uh, put it like this.com and you'll be able to find out more information about my courses. Mm -hmm. Very good. Put it like this.com. Now, if this is your first time watching, please say hello, say hi, write your name in the chat. Tell us where you're from, where you're watching from. And as we go through our questions and our vocabulary, if you have any questions, and you want clarification or more explanation or more examples, just write a question in the chat and we'll be more than happy to answer it for you. Mm -hmm. Lynn, what's, uh, what's today's topic? Well, today we thought we would talk about the movies because um, let's talk about the movies. <laughs> And um, I think I was just saying to Craig, we actually had forgotten, hadn't we? But three years ago, we also, if you look in the archives of our of, of the YouTube um, channels, you'll see that we did do a, a, a live stream on films about three years ago. But we, we did a lot of vocabulary on that one. And today, I want to talk about or to try to chat about talking about the movies in general. Because um, I think all cultures around the world um, have cinemas and movies. It's like a really, it's a shared cultural pastime, I think, isn't it? With all yeah. cultures around the world. Definitely. And of course, the movies is also a great way if you're trying to improve your English. If you listen and expose yourself to English, you can do that through movies. So um, we're going to talk a lot about movies today, why we watch them, uh, why we like them and why they're so, it's sort of a, because it is a shared cultural thing around the world, it must be something very intrinsic to, to us as humans that we like watching the movies so much. So hopefully we'll talk about that a little bit. Mm -hmm. It's very good timing as well because we've just had the Oscars. Many people watch True. the Oscars. People mm -hmm. have been commenting about who won, who didn't win. And on the topic of using movies and TV series, but mainly movies to improve your English, one question I'm often asked, and I'm sure you are as well, Lynn, is should I watch movies with subtitles in my language or subtitles in English or dubbed? How should people or how should students watch movies in order to improve their English? What do you think? Mm. What, what do you usually say? Well, 
I know my answer, but I do have to say for everybody watching, you have to, I think you have to experiment for yourselves because just earlier this year, I was doing a, a group course with uh, a group of English teachers and it was a very intensely debated question, this, because there were some teachers who were like really, really sure that it was important not to have any subtitles at all. Mm -hmm. And there were other teachers who thought, yes, so it's, there's a lot of disagreement about this. My personal, uh, my personal position in the thing that I advise my students to do is to watch movies with subtitles in English. And I have a reason for that. It's because when I had my, my children are bilingual and when they were growing up in Spain, um, I used to put English movies on them. For them, well, the television was only in English. We only put English videos on and English movies because, of course, living in Spain, they were surrounded by Spanish, but they only had me as a model for English. So I wanted to expose them to more English. And because my husband um, is Spanish, he preferred to watch the movies with English subtitles because it was very strenuous for him in the evening to come home and then to concentrate on English. So, so in English, in English, but with English subtitles. English. So we used to put the English subtitles on for my husband because it was just a bit more relaxing for him to do that because he wasn't really learning English as such. And so we got into the habit of a family of watching English movies with English subtitles. And I still do it today. And there was an unexpected knock-on effect. There was an unexpected effect. And the effect was that our children learned an awful lot of English because of the English subtitles. Their spelling was brilliant. And they were very, very good readers in English. And it was because, of course, everybody's eyes, you wander to the subtitles yeah. at some point. And I think it has advantages for two things, because there's a lot of words in English that are not pronounced the way they are spelt. And when you are, read the word and you hear it at the same time, even though you're not aware of it, your brain somehow subconsciously makes the connection between the spelling and the pronunciation. And I think over time, with a lot of exposure, it improves your own pronunciation because you, you know what the word sounds like. And, so you, um, you make that connection between what you, you're hearing and what you're reading. And what you're reading, which because English is not phonetic, it, it that's very difficult. Sometimes if you see a word, you have no idea how to pronounce it. Right. And sometimes you speak words and you have no idea how to spell, how them. To spell them. So so that's a very good like thing that's happening in the background without you realizing it. And it really worked for my my daughters. And then the other thing that I think is very helpful is that, of course, it's not an exam to watch a movie. You're not trying to pass an exam. And when you have the subtitles, you become aware of the things that you acoustically didn't catch. And probably you didn't catch them because of the rhythm of English or the way that we weaken the pronunciation. And when you're reading the subtitles, of course, again, you are made aware of the things that you didn't actually physically hear the first time round. And over time, this is all a process over a lot of exposure and a lot of time, but over time, I think it's only a win-win situation to watch movies with subtitles because you increase your vocabulary and you increase your listening and your pronunciation ability over time. Of course, it's not an exam. It's not like what happens in an exam. In an exam, you don't get subtitles and you have to listen and understand. Yeah. But watching movies should be a pleasurable thing. So mm -hmm. I think that's it's not an exam. <laughs> that's True. my opinion. What do you think, Craig? Well, I agree with some of what you said. Just let me say hi to people who are commenting here. Alvarado's mm -hmm. here from Guatemala. Welcome. Miriam, hello. 
Marlene, mm -hmm. you're back in Italy, I'm guessing. So Italy, of course, a country with a rich history of cinema, Fellini mm -hmm. and many other fine directors. Ignacio, hello, from Jaén. And Ignacio says, uh, in Spain, it's difficult to find subtitles in English, only in mm -hmm. some films and documentaries. Most of the occasions, uh, the subtitles are in Spanish. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it depends what system you've got. If you're watching on Netflix or on your movie star, whatever system you've got at home to watch TV, most YouTube videos have CC subtitles. They're not always accurate but mm -hmm. maybe 90 percent accurate so youtube could be a, a place but of course you're not going to watch the yeah. latest movies on YouTube. i think the the streaming services do tend to have uh, english subtitles if but not not them, always yeah. uh-huh yeah, yeah but not always so i yeah i agree with most of what you said I, I i tell you what i don't think is a good idea and i don't think it's a good idea to watch with English audio and Spanish subtitles yeah. or spa or subtitles in your language mm -hmm. because people don't usually listen and read and have that information go into their heads at the same time. Mm -mm. And if you've ever seen somebody give a PowerPoint presentation with lots of text and they keep speaking, mm -hmm. either you're listening to them or you're reading. You're, you're mm -hmm. not usually doing both. Yeah. And when you're reading in your language, you're probably switching off the audio mm -hmm. so you're not listening mm -hmm. to the english you're just reading your language mm -hmm. so if you are a lower level i'd suggest watching the film in your language first mm -hmm. and after watch it in english you know what's going to happen and you could enjoy the film because it's not dubbed you're enjoying it in its original version if mm -hmm. the english speakers are famous actors and you can follow the story because you've watched it before in your language However, if you have a good level, intermediate or above, as um, as you were saying, Lynn, I'd say watch it in English with English subtitles. And of course, if you're very high level, just watch it in English. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's my opinion. Yeah, yeah, but I, I agree with you, Craig. I, I don't think it's a good idea to do a mixture of the languages because... You could. There are some people who are simultaneous translators, and that is a very, very difficult skill. Simultaneous translators, there's not many of them in the world, and they can't work for very long periods. They usually have a break, don't they, of about half an – like they work for half an hour, I think, and have another break for half an hour. Yeah. Because it's an extremely difficult – intellectual mental skill to translate from one language directly into the other one simultaneously and if you're doing that with the subtitles in one language and the audio in another it's kind of like that and yeah. that's a very difficult thing for the brain to handle your, your it's too brain, much multitasking your brain ends up like scrambled eggs after mm. that i think <laughs> uh oh marlene is in uh is still in malta oh you're back here with us you mean not back in Italy. Yeah. okay i yeah. understand uh -huh. <laughs> um and dimitri hello to you uh mm. friend of mine dimitri and augustine uh, good to see mm. you here as well augustine it's been a long time right. thanks for joining it's good to have you mm -hmm. so what else do we have here connected to movies uh, well, i wanted genres. to start by asking about the genres now, genres that's a, funny, a very funny word it's it's an it's one of those words in english that has come from french Oh. And so we try as English people to pronounce it in a French way. And the pronunciation is genre, genre. Is that how you say it? That's how I say it, Craig. Gen do you say? Uh, what do genre. I say? I say uh, genre. 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 Uh -huh. Yeah, genre. same as you, genre. Mm -hmm. so we try to pronounce it like, but we don't say genre. No, we say genre. No. Genre. Uh -huh. So, um, so this is our first question for everybody. What is your favorite film genre? And genre, obviously, for those if you don't know, genre means type of movies. Uh huh. And how category. many category? Category. Uh huh. And how many different genres can you actually think of? And I have. Um, I have a little trick at the end because um, recently one of my very uh, a colleague of mine really because she's a fellow teacher she's a colleague of ours Craig yeah. and I've been discussing a lot of stuff with Anna 
about um, films because she's a specialist in audio visual and she might be watching tonight. I don't know. But hello, um, Anna, if you're watching, good if to you're see watching, you. hi, Anna, because this is inspired from you. And she's been telling me all about the film genres. And here is my little spoiler for you there are well over 90 out there. Well really? over 90, nine zero genres. Wow. That's a lot. So here's our challenge to you. Get typing in the chat file and tell us all the types of genres that you think you can know. Liz, Liz Luth was the first to comment. Psychological mm -hmm. terror, like psycho. Wow. Yeah, that's one. Oh, you like that. I that They frighten me a little bit. It's not my favorite. Uh -huh. Drama. Psychological drama. Drama. I like drama. Yeah, I like drama too. I like historical dramas a lot. Uh, hi, hi, Steve. Good to see you here. Sci-fi, mm -hmm. science fiction. Um, yeah. yeah, I know that's one of your favorites, Steve. Ah. Not the horror, yeah. Notice that Steve there's put horror, not terror. If you're a Spanish speaker, it's often mistranslated from uh, from terror in Spanish to terror. No, it's horror. Uh, that's horror. the genre, uh -huh. a horror movie. Uh -huh. And Ignacio says historical with actions, actions, A-C-T-I-O-N-S, action scenes, uh, scenes, S C E N E S, like battles, ship battles, and things. Ah, I like historical action movies too. Me I, too. I, yeah. I, I like them. They are very uh, interesting. I also like war movies. I know they can be a bit depressing. I do. I'm surprised. But you like I them. enjoy war movies. I think it's because it, it kind of, especially if they're historically accurate, you. It's very interesting. And it always makes you think, I think, war movies. You so know, does like Dimitri. Uh-huh. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, Dimitri likes war movies. Um, war dramas, horror, comedian. Com so, Ignacio, can you put Ignacio? Comedians. Now, okay, not with an M, but with an N. Comedians. And comedians are the people. The funny but people. What, for the genre, you would say comedy. Comedy. And Tiomsi? Ah, Tiomsi. Hello. Good to uh -huh. see you here, Tiomsi. Thanks for joining. Has, has used a lovely word. This is a special word from movies, rom-coms, which is um, the genre of romantic comedies. And they cut the word and they made a new word, rom-coms, uh, which is a romantic comedy. So things like um, Four Weddings and a Funeral is a rom-com. Love Actually is a very famous rom-com. Mm -hmm. Do you know any more? Um, what's her name's diary? Bridget Jones's Bridget diary. Bridget Jones's diary is a rom-com. That's right. Uh huh. <laughs> and I like them. I like the genre of rom-com. Mm -hmm. I have to what's be in your... the mood. Yeah. <laughs> They're usually good Christmas movies, you know, to yeah. watch on Christmas Day. <laughs> What uh, what genre do you like, Craig? What's your favourite genre? Like you, I like war, war movies, war films. Um, and like Steve, I like science fiction very much. And mm. um, comedies, if it's a good one. But I find that many US comedies, comedies coming out of, the, of America is not my sense of humour. So a good British comedy that really connects with my cultural roots uh, mm. makes me laugh a lot. Um, mm -hmm. I like those very much. I it, think it those depends kind what mood of, I'm in. It depends on my mood. Uh, I think some of them, when we were talking earlier about like movies being uh, something that all cultures share, I think there are some genres that resonate with all cultures, like maybe horror movies or maybe war movies or historical movies. But I think comedy is one of the genres that doesn't translate well across cultures. Because, I mean, even between American comedies and British comedies, we we don't really find American comedies. I mean, some of them are funny, but not all of them. I don't find all of them funny. And I'm sure for Americans, they don't find all British comedies funny. Yeah. Comedy is very culturally um, culturally specific sometimes, isn't it? It's also one of the last things you learn in a language typically. So if you are an advanced learner and you're watching an American or a British film that's funny and you're laughing, then you can pat yourself on the back because yeah. your level of English <laughs> is really, really good. Uh -huh. um, 
Marlin says that cartoons were not mentioned. Animation and cartoons is another genre. Mm -hmm. uh, Disney, for example. Mm -hmm. That's true. And I like a lot of those movies. I, 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 before I had children, I didn't really watch animated movies. But obviously with my kids, I've seen a lot of them. And one of my favorite movies of all time is the Shrek. You know, the Shrek series, Shrek 1, Shrek 2. Yep. I love Shrek. <laughs> Me too. And um, the Minions and things like that. And now and my children are grown up now, but now I quite like the animated movies. So I would go and see an animated movie now. But before I had kids, I, I, I didn't really... I used to think they were very childish, but a lot of those animated movies are made for adults as well, aren't they? They're made for adults and children, which yeah, is they really very nice. Yeah, they very often work on two levels. Two levels, uh, on, yeah. On purpose. Mm -hmm. Ignatio's mm -hmm. talking about, it's not soup, soup is, is what you drink or eat. You eat tomato soup or vegetable soup. Soap opera is, I think, what you're thinking of, Ignatio, and soap mm -hmm. operas in Spanish telenovelas, they tend to be more TV series than movies and films. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Soap operas are very dramatic. They tell the story mm -hmm. of love and romance and relationships. And uh, they're kind of mundane as well. I always think soap operas like um, they're series and they have different sort of episodes, but there's nothing like major really happens in a soap opera is it it's just sort of like the stuff of daily drama you know yeah mm -hmm. um we've been asked for recommendations of uh funny comedies uh liz luth wants us to share recommendations my ah. one of my personal favorites is actually american i just said uh -huh. that sometimes i don't <laughs> find them funny the big lebowski is one of my oh, favorite uh -huh. uh, comedies i'll put uh -huh. that in the, in the chat for you uh -huh. uh, what, what's one of yours lynn I think I like the I like the romantic comedy. So I like Bridget Jones. I like those. I like um uh, let me think. Bridget Jones and I was thinking of another one. Um yeah, love the, actually? about a well love actually is nice, but I also like about a boy. Have you seen that one with Hugh Grant? Hugh about Grant, a boy. Yeah. The book's mm -hmm. very good as well. The book very good too yes yeah. so that was a one based on a book and i and i like that i thought it was very good so uh -huh. here you've mentioned most of these you did very very well you've mentioned most of these that we've got yeah. here except maybe fantasy historical dramas sometimes called costume dramas because the people are wearing costumes yeah. from mm -hmm. history and thrillers uh western would mm -hmm. be uh, a movie with guns and cowboys and indians mm -hmm. fighting bow and arrow mm -hmm. that kind of mm -hmm. thing agustin and... has just mentioned that actually he just oh, okay. came up with westerns uh -huh. so yeah well done you got most of them yeah great but there are 90 and <laughs> um uh i sent the link to you if you want to know what the 90 genres are there is a list did you see that link that i sent uh craig I did. I don't know I'll if put you it can in the copy chat. it in the chat yes. file. If, it, if anybody wants to look and see what the 90 genres are of movies, <laughs> there's an awful lot. Uh -huh. There we are. Uh -huh. It's there. And uh, Dimitri has said biography movies. Um, for that one, you need to say um, the adjective, Dimitri, because if you notice, we say like romantic movies. Romantic is the adjective from romance. Or we say horror movies. Horror is the adjective. And by here, if you make an adjective, you'd have to say biographical movies. Uh -huh. Biographical movies. Tricky Great. word. Five syllables. Biographical. Stress the third mm. syllable. Biographical. Biographical. Mm -hmm. Biographical. Great. Great. Okay. So we're going to move on now to we thought we would talk about our motivation. Like why? Do we want to watch movies? Have you ever thought about it? Um, Why do we take the time to watch movies? Maybe you, you guys are you in the me or are you asking people? I'm in asking the chat? everybody, but maybe the people in the chat file can start giving us their answers hmm. while Craig thinks about it. Good question. Why do, Why do we I take watch the time movies? to watch movies? Because they take a lot of time, don't they? Because movies can be quite long. 
And I've noticed yeah. they're getting longer as mm. well. Like re- mm. it used to be hour, hour and a half, hour and forty minutes. Uh, now they're they're getting very long, maybe three yeah. hours, two and a half, three hours. Oppenheimer, Oppenheimer was really long. I think it was three hours. Uh huh. Yeah. Food for the soul, not feed. Food for the soul. Oh, that's a good answer, one. Dimitri. Yeah, food for the soul. Yeah, so it makes you reflect. That's actually that's true. I think I watch some movies for that too, because you kind of like. Sometimes you want to be, maybe you you get inspired, don't you, by things that you see in the movies. Another friend uh, just today said to me that she sometimes watches movies because she likes comparing her own life with the life in the stories. Oh, that and would sometimes... depress me because everybody in the movie has a perfect life. That would well, really no, bring no, me that, down. Well, no, that's not always. If, if something negative, you can say, oh, that happened to me too. Yeah. Yeah. Or So you always see people who are better than you, but you see people who are worse than you. So it, it's kind of... It, it it kind of relativizes you. It doesn't make it makes you feel good about yourself sometimes. Uh-huh. Um, Procrast- procrastination. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good. That's, that's funny, a good, Liz. Uh-huh. Yeah. That's funny, Liz. And for people who don't know the abbreviation that Liz has put at the end, L O L, that's a very common abbreviation in texting speak in text speak, and it's laugh out loud, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. So we, when years ago, Luth, uh, Liz, years ago, we didn't have LOL, but we used to say ha ha. <laughs> but now everybody goes lol, LOL. Very nice. I like lol. <laughs> Marlene says she watches movies to immerse herself in a new dimension and get away from the hectic routine to stop mm-hmm. time for a while, which in one word really is escapism. And that's escapism. why I watch. I watch uh-huh. to relax and to escape mm-hmm. from mm-hmm. everyday life, escapism, especially yeah, with escapism. science fiction. Yeah. Yeah. And re- relaxation, I think, is a common one too. I know when I'm very stressed, I want to sit down on the couch. This is when I'm watching movies at home, obviously, because for relaxation, going out to the movies doesn't really relax me. But relax, watching a movie at home will relax me. And it, and it does. You don't have to think about your own life, do you? So you just mm-hmm. have to watch and it's just you just consume it. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Any other reasons why people watch movies? There's quite a few I, I was thinking of. Maybe if you do watch them in the cinema at the cinema, mm-hmm. then it's a, more of a social reason. Also, mm-hmm. if you want to go out on a date romantically, you could go for dinner and a movie, ah, or even so have a date flirting. night with your partner for flirting, okay. for going out, and <laughs> uh-huh. taking somebody out on a first date, or even going out with your partner, your steady uh-huh. partner, and going out to see a movie is yeah. a nice way to. It's not the same just sitting on the couch and staying in the same home uh-huh. environment as going out, yeah. putting on some nice clothes, having something to eat, then going to watch a good movie. Uh-huh. And of course, you get the better sound, you get the better screen in uh-huh. the cinema. And also, I think it's like I like it even at home with my husband. I like watching the movies with him because I think it's kind of like a shared experience. It's like doing something with somebody together. I like watching the movies with the family, with the girls as well. And it also gives you something to talk about, doesn't it, afterwards? Well, yeah, but my wife and I have very, very different tastes. So she doesn't Ah, like war films. She likes ah, different films. So Mm -hmm. the Christmassy kind of films that I don't really like. um, Uh But if if you watch those movies with other people, it does give you something to talk about because people like talk about if you've oh have you seen Oppenheimer or have you seen the Society of Snow and what did you think and like movies give like a common uh, something to talk about in the office or something to talk about at work Uh yeah it, it helps like it's it's like a shared cultural experience with the other people in society which I think is we don't realize it, but it, it's what creates a sense of culture in the end, you know, that people have watched the same kind of movies. 
I T B I S. I'm not sure what that is. Do you know, Lynn? I think it's just that the B has appeared by accident. I think she wanted to say it is a good idea to relax. Ah, okay. Maybe? Yeah. Maybe. Possibly. Can you clarify that, Alvarado? Uh, what do you mean said, uh, oh, yeah. And mm -hmm. it's a good idea to um to relax. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say take a relax, maybe take a break, perhaps, mm -hmm. but relax doesn't collocate with with take so uh, mm -hmm. to relax at least once a week or to take a break once a week mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah okay and there's another reason mm -hmm. to watch movies which oh, i you know had some that more. yeah tell us we had some more another reason that um some people watch movies definitely my our colleague anna um she watches movies because some people like i've discovered with anna that movies are indeed a lovely art form and when you actually look behind what happens in a movie, there is so much to appreciate about a movie. The if way the cameras if it's well were, made. If it's well made, but even if it isn't well made. But there's a lot that you can watch and understand and figure out, not just about the plot, because I think the first time you watch a movie, and for me, the natural way to watch a movie is you're just trying to follow the action and figure out what's happening. Uh -huh. That's the way I normally watch movies. But since I've been discussing the, the whole concept of movies with Anna so much, I, it's sort of demystified it. And then I've suddenly decided, you suddenly see the whole movie is like a work of art. Mm -hmm. It's like a piece of music. Well, I mean, music is part of movies too. And there's so many interesting things that you can look at in a movie. And I know that Anna, very rare, like now she says she just watches movies because she's constantly like um, figuring out all the different tricks that the director has used, the, the way this, the special effects have been done, the way the script has been written, the way the, the lighting is, the way the colors are. There's so many things in a movie to, but that could to be understand. A but that could be a double-edged sword. A double-edged sword is where there's a good side and there's a, a bad side mm -hmm. or a negative side because I agree 100%. And when you know to look for those kind of things, it kind of takes you out of the journey that the movie is taking you on because mm -hmm. when you're just watching it for enjoyment, you're not thinking about the shots, if it's a close-up shot, if it's a scene-setting shot, a very wide-angle shot, you're not noticing how the music is playing with your emotions mm -hmm. in the film. But if you study film like like Anna mm -hmm. does, then you look for those things so you're not having the same experience no, because you're kind true. of analysing it as you're watching it, which is completely different. <laughs> that's completely different. But I found so far, I'm I, she's got me, that I watch the movie first of all to understand it and enjoy it. And then what I've been doing recently is re-watching movies yeah. and then when i'm re-watching them i'm appreciating so much more that the first time round that i kind of missed uh-huh another reason to watch liz luth says take a chill i would say chill out use the phrasal verb chill to chill uh -huh. out mm -hmm. chill out with a good movie mm-hmm uh, and what about uh, the reason of watching movies that it's an alternative to books? Because I thought, you know, really in cultural terms, it has movies kind of replaced books. I mean, before the movies existed and television and all of that, like 100 years ago or a little bit more now, maybe, um, the entertainment source that people had, the cultural source that people had, were books. And well, then got, when the mm. movies and the films and the TV started, it kind of, it's an alternative, isn't it, to books? Because you can escape in books as well and you can enjoy books as an art form. Okay, and you I've can got relax a question with for book. you and I've got a question mm -hmm. for everyone watching. You mentioned before a film that we've both seen with Hugh Grant about a boy, which is based mm -hmm. on a book. Many movies and films are based on books. And have you ever watched a film after reading the book and said that film is a better interpretation or a better story than the book? Or have you always preferred the book 
to the film. Can you name mm. one film that's better than the book? I think I can. I can too. <laughs> uh -huh. Okay, so shall we name the ones we're thinking <laughs> well, of? Well, Ignacio, first of all, Ignacio said there's many books and films which are worse, with an E, Ignacio, worse than the reading version. Uh huh. Uh, reading, R E A D, reading version. That's, I think that's true. I would agree with him. I think uh, often, if you, a lot of the time, you read the book, you really enjoy it, and then the film is not as rich. As no, it's book. not. It doesn't. Your imagination of how you see things when you're reading uh -huh. is different to the interpretation of the director in the film. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And sometimes there are books which are very clever with, as I, I realized this very recently because I read the, the, the latest book. You know, have, you, have you ever read The Hunger Games, Craig? No, but I've seen the films. You've seen the films, right? So The Hunger Games is a series of books. I read the books first. The books are excellent. They were, they were, it's a good book to read for learners of English, I think, because it's very exciting. The books are not too long, so they're a good size. You don't get depressed with them. And the books are, are quite exciting, and there's not too much specialist vocabulary in there. So um, they're written by Suzanne Collins, and it's a whole series. And they're very, they're very interesting books, I think. The films were made from the Hunger Games books, and I've seen the films. And the films are visually mm, quite good, too. Many people enjoyed the films. The films were well made. But then just recently, she's brought out, last year, she brought out a prequel book to the Hunger Games. Prequel means the one that happens before the, the series. And um, in the prequel book, we read it at Christmas. And it's very good, but it's all about the, the reason why one character became the way he is in the Hunger Games books. And a lot of the narrative is written from his first person. And you see this young person and you see all the... The, the, the problems he has when he's growing up as a teenager and how he thinks one way and does other things and it's not consistent. And that was very difficult in the movie. I've watched the movie, which is also being made about this prequel, and it's completely different. And you can't get that. The director can't get those like, um, uh, what do you say, when a character doesn't really know how he's behaving he can't get that nuance in the movie so i think it depends on the type of book as well some books just don't you can't do it if the if the narrative is in the head of the characters ignatio mm. says that uh, the film doesn't respect the content of the book and introduce mm. new things uh far away from the book version yeah yeah that's very true mm. although i can think of one film that's better than the book in my opinion uh huh. Maybe Which one disagree. is that? The Godfather. Oh, I never read the book, so I don't know. I've I've only seen the films. The books are uh -huh. good. The books are good, mm -hmm. but I think the films are so good mm -hmm. that um, yeah, definitely. Uh, I mean, I've seen The Godfather so many times, especially mm -hmm. one and Godfather one, Godfather two. Mm -hmm. Mario Mario Lucci, I think, wrote the book. I'm sure Marlene knows the author. I think he's Italian. Uh -huh. But yeah, the first two Godfathers were amazing films. Uh huh. Can you think I, of any more? Hmm. Well, the one I'm thinking of is that it's a series. It's actually not a film, but it's a very, very famous, which is the Game of Thrones. And I saw the Game of Thrones series, and then I read the books, and I found the books at the end incredibly tedious. And the the films are visually very very um, well done, uh -huh. mm -hmm. yeah. So the the scenes and the scenery and the and some of the have you seen Game of Thrones? Yeah, the war well, scenes at the end. Yeah, the TV uh -huh. series. Mm. 
the mm. sea, uh, and yeah. the war scenes at the end with the battles. I actually watched the, it twice. And the yeah, seven, me, I've, wa I've, I've watched twice. it three times, three really? times. I've watched it three times. And the more I watch it, but again, now I'm analyzing it. When I see the scenes, I think it's amazing what they did with it the, because they filmed in in different locations and some of the locations I know they filmed some of them in Catheris. So when, and that's a place I go to very oh, often. Right. Of course. So yeah. when I'm watching it, I'm looking out for places that I know <laughs> because they use these medieval cities. Some of it was filmed in Croatia. Some of it yeah. was filmed in Peniscola, which was very close to where we were. We of live. Of course. Of mm -hmm. course. Yeah. So but you need, you need that combination of very good script writing, good story, good acting, good directing, cinematography. Uh -huh. You mentioned all of those things have to come together as they, as they did in the Godfather and mm -hmm. Ignacio yeah. agrees with me. Miriam has a good point. She says in the book, there's more information. And when you see mm -hmm. the movie, it's not the same by definition. If a movie is two hours, you really have to compress yeah. the uh -huh. story of the book. Uh -huh. into a two-hour story which uh -huh. obviously doesn't give you enough time to develop the characters uh -huh. subplots those kind of but things. i think that's where that's what i've learned though that's where a good director with good music good camera angles good good the way they they put like a small maybe in the book you've got like a lot of different action pieces and they decide to only include one scene of all of that in the movie because of the time constraints but if the director gets the right one sometimes because of the music the camera angles the costumes you have encapsulated maybe three or four chapters in a book yeah but that takes a good director, I think, with a very good eye, I think. Uh, like a, a, that, that, that makes the difference between a very well done film, maybe like the, because The Godfather had particular music, didn't it, as well, that, yes. that helped communicate a lot of emotion. They also had colors and they had like um, sort of c scenery and they also had like close-ups of the characters and that communicates a lot of stuff that's actually written in a book if it's done well. Mm -hmm. Augustin says he prefers books because his imagination has no budget limits. <laughs> so yeah, that's true. That's Augustine. very clever, Augustine. That's yeah. very clever. So when you make a movie, you only have a certain amount of money you can spend, and that is your budget. So mm -hmm. if you spend too much, too much more, or mm -hmm. a lot more, you're going over budget and of mm. course you're, that doesn't happen with your imagination mm. you can mm. imagine all sorts of things in your mind and it mm. doesn't cost you any money yeah and that's true where am i marlene says uh, twilight was an enthralling experience that's a lovely collocation. nice lovely collocation mm -hmm. uh, she didn't read the book uh, though so she can't really compare Mm -hmm. Twilight. Did you see that? I don't. They were. I've seen, seen that. that. My daughters have watched those. Twilight is. I think it's a vampire series, isn't yeah, is it? That the, the vampires. Yeah. Yeah, they're vampires, and I think I have read the book and I've watched the film, but I can't remember vampire. The vampire genre is not really my cup of tea. I have no. to say, <laughs> no, I'm not really into the vampire. Uh, do Ignacio mentions the Da Vinci Code. Now that is a very, very thick book. Yeah, I and didn't, it's also I didn't like a the very film complicated very film. Uh -huh. I didn't. I didn't enjoy the film. Wasn't it Tom Hanks not? in the film? Yeah, I liked the film. I liked no, the film. I, Lots of action and uh, some I beautiful scenes as well in Italy. Uh huh. I enjoyed the book, but not so much the film. Uh, mm. Most most films don't live up to no. uh, the book if it's mm. a good book. Mm -hmm. The one um, that I was always surprised at was Harry Potter because I've mm. read all the Harry Potter books several times and I really love the books and I've seen the movies and the movies are very well done. There's The, the movies have, have characters that are exactly the way I imagined them. So the director and the people who created the movies they definitely captured the feel of the books.
But the problem with the, the films is I don't understand how anybody can understand the movies. There's so much complex plot in the books and in the movies, they can't reproduce it. So I, it, hmm. I, I could never understand why the movies were so popular amongst people because I thought, how do they really understand what's going on? Because in the maybe books, because the, plot the genre is really was so difficult. different, we uh -huh. didn't really have those kind of magical genres before. Mm -hmm. There weren't many, and I think it kind of broke the mold a bit. It, it, it was groundbreaking. That's the word, groundbreaking. Groundbreaking mm -hmm. in the way it was filmed and interpreted. So maybe that was the reason. It just maybe, captured people's maybe. imagination. Uh huh. Yeah. How do you decide which films to see? Now, you can get recommendations oh. from friends. You can read reviews online. You can look at what's on at the local cinema. You can follow a particular genre, as we mentioned mm -hmm. before, or you can follow particular director's movies. I really like the Coen Brothers, for example. Ah, okay. Or you could uh -huh. follow different actors. So how do you decide what film you're going to watch and what film you're not? going to watch mm -hmm. if you have an opinion write it in the chat i know some people are watching so let us know what you think mm -hmm. how do you decide how do you decide lynn i think i am um, probably from reading reviews and hearing like on maybe chats uh, amongst colleagues or you know, like, so sometimes things are advertised, aren't they? Like on the on the news, and they say the new movie or this one's in the running for the Oscars. So Outside I kind of, of hear, <laughs> yeah. So I kind of like hear about what movies are popular, and then um, if if I think it interests me, then probably just we decide with my family that we would go and see it. Um, I have began to watch because I really respect Anna and her opinions. So Anna is giving me loads of repu uh, recommendations and I'm watching quite a lot of movies. So if you find a friend who has a similar taste, I think that's that they're good sources of recommendations. What I find really disappointing is the the artificial intelligence recommendations that we get on the streaming services. So like on Netflix or on HBO, it says people who, now that you have watched this, uh, people like you watch this. <laughs> and I don't like that. And I find it quite, but, I've, but I've how, tried to follow the recommendations often, but how a few accurate times, are but they? it doesn't are they, work. Are they accurate? Well, for me, no, uh, for me, no. But I, I don't know whether it's – I think the problem is they show you more of the same. But the, the, the thing I love about movies is being surprised. So if I, get, if I watch a movie and it surprises me, then I think it's brilliant. So I'm not interested in watching things that are similar to the mm. things I've already watched. Do you know what I mean? I do and know I what think you mean. that's so... what the artificial intelligence does. It it gives you the same, the same flavors. And and I, I kind of like get excited about seeing different things, you know? So the algorithm is not working for you. Yeah. And Paloma looks at a WhatsApp film group, ah, which is a good idea. Uh -huh. That's a good idea. So and sharing... are you part of that film group, uh, Paloma, or do you just, uh, like, are you an active member of the film group? Or are you just sort of, do you just follow the, the threads that they give? Because that must be fun if you have a, if you belong to a film group. I've never belonged to a film group. A film group must be like a book club, is it? Or a podcast club? Uh-huh. I'm trying to find a website. I think it's called Green Tomatoes that gives Rotten film. Tomatoes. Is it Rotten? Rotten Tomatoes, yeah. I read reviews on Rotten Tomatoes. Uh huh. Yeah, Paloma yeah. says she's an active member. That's a good idea, that. That's a nice thing. You probably get good recommendations there. Mm -hmm. But you probably have to be quite a film buff to follow that. A film buff is somebody who's very, very keen on films. Mm -hmm. Can you put that in the chat? That's a lovely word. A film buff. Someone film who really buff. likes films. Uh-huh. 
and a buff means you're very you very intelligent you know a lot about it you're an expert uh-huh. Marlene mm-hmm. says she follows her gut feeling another nice expression mm-hmm. yeah and the visual is expiring so the trailer maybe you watch the trailer yeah. and that attracts uh-huh. you the film trailer yeah. uh-huh and sometimes the film trailers are interesting, I think, as well, because there's different types of film trailers. Some film trailers look make it make the film look very complicated, and I that puts me off. If I can't understand the trailer, I don't want to watch the movie. <laughs> it puts me um, off. And then there are other film trailers that tell you the entire story of the movie. It's like so a why, spoiler. Why say, why go? So why, why bother it? watching it? And that also puts me off. So you have to have a good trailer to attract my attention. Yes, Rosa, that was a <laughs> it has lovely to be film. A little bit between Il Postino. Mm-hmm. That was a lovely film. That was a few years ago. I saw that. Did you see the Is, Postman? No, 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 no. What's that about? A postman. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, but is it a horror movie? It sounds like a the horror genre, movie, is it? Um, no, it's set in Italy, and it's about mm-hmm. the life of a postman. I don't remember much about the plot, to be honest, mm-hmm. but I do remember I enjoyed it very much. And I'll be interested to see if your friend Anna critically approves of it because I think uh-huh. it was a very well shot film. The pace of the film was quite slow, but... Uh-huh. Sometimes if a, if a, if the pace goes slowly and the film draws you in and you get absorbed uh-huh. by the story, then that's a very, very well made and very well put together film. Yeah, that's true. Another recommendation by Ignacio, Kramer versus Cra- Kramer. Kramer. Uh-huh. And Ignacio says the reason, the, the comment before, he says it's the acting which makes him decide which films he'll watch. So the actors... So if it's actors that he really likes, like Robert De Niro, Dustin Hoffman, Kirk Douglas, Sophie Loren, then that would draw him to a film. Mm-hmm. Does that draw draw you? Do you like to watch movies with famous actors? For me, no. Uh, it doesn't do that for no, me. No, because if it's a bad director, even a good actor will make a bad film. Yeah, yeah. And I watched one a couple of days ago. I watched half an hour of one a couple of days ago with what's the name of that actor who was in the um Bruce Willis and one of oh. his la- one of his latest films and unfortunately he's suffering from um Alzheimer's I think Bruce Willis uh-huh. is, is really and it was one of his last most oh, okay. recent films and it was mm-hmm. terrible mm-hmm. absolutely terrible partly because I think he was only saying line by line and it was probably very difficult to film him but also the directors should should have done a better job. So I think, though, with Bruce Willis, I always think his films are a bit hit and miss. That's a phrase, hit and miss. Like, there, there have been brilliant films with Bruce Willis, like the ones, what were those terrorists? Die Hard, the first Die Hard. ones. But then the, the the end of the the this when they came out with Die Hard three, Die Hard four, Die Hard four, they were terrible. Die Hard and, with a vengeance. <laughs> yeah, and and um, and Bruce Willis has been in some movies that we they're called B movies, aren't they? They're like not very, they weren't very successful. But then he's been in other movies where he's very very good. Um, so yeah, it's a bit hit and miss with him, I think. Mm-hmm. If you had a a job in film, would you prefer to be in front of the camera or behind it? <laughs> There's a question. There's uh, a question. Answer in the chat file before we embarrass let, let ourselves us, here. Let us know. <laughs> <laughs> when I was young, I wanted to be, of course, I wanted to be a film An star. Actress. So I would have liked to have been in front of the camera. But since I've been had my eyes opened by understanding film with Anna... Now I think I would love to have a job behind the camera. What uh-huh. would you do behind the camera? Cameraman, editor, script writer, makeup editor. artist? Well, I think like the camera, the camera shots. I'm very interested in the camera shots, the way they move. Either the cameras or the um, sound, because I think it's amazing what they do with the sound as well in movies. I agree, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What about you? Would you like to be... Oh, what do you think? I mean, see, no, it's easy. I mean, you know me, Lynn. What do you think? Oh, you'd be doing sound, wouldn't you? 
course. Well, I'd be behind the camera. I'm very, very interested uh -huh. in, in video, in making video, but I just don't have time. It's so oh, time okay. consuming. Uh -huh. But I love sound. Um, so it would be something to do with sound. Although mm. if I were 18 years old, then I would definitely study video and I would mm -hmm. either edit or I would be the cameraman. Or direct. <laughs> I have that's, to tell no, everybody that's here. So much responsibility. Directing. But you did very I mean, well on my promotional video. Craig helped me <laughs> once to make a video <laughs> to put yeah, what, up on my website an introductory video. And I was terrified. I was absolutely terrified because I'd never done anything like that before. And Craig was marvelous. He, it like, wasn't exactly Hollywood, down. though, was it? It wasn't well, exactly. I um, thought it was quite professional the way you did it all. <laughs> Dimitri said he picks movies according to its past awards and reviews, and sometimes he just follows the familiar actors who, who, who pose themselves unchangingly throughout their life. I'm trying to see who pose themselves unchangingly throughout their life throughout their lives i think he means that the he follows the actors and really the actors all they do is they they have a like one one persona and they yeah. project that all through their lives and they have success like maybe john wayne or always plays the same character or hugh grant jack or nicholson jack nicholson or al pacino yeah 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 it's it, it's true and and I was I was very surprised to learn when like studying this thing with film with Anna that in actual fact in a movie the the actors are the least important of everything, and whatever the actor does, really it depends on the camera shots, the music, the editors about how the scene is portrayed. So the actor might be acting, thinking he is being sad. In actual fact, the bit of footage that they get from filming him might be made in completely, might be put in the movie in a completely different, with a completely different focus. So in actual fact, the actors are very unimportant. Well, obviously they're not unimportant, but they're not the most important people in making a movie. Mm. Okay. Uh, I think we've got time for one more question. So... Mm -hmm. Either, I'm trying to think which one I like here. Um, if a film were made about your life, which famous oh, I don't actor would you? You don't want that one. Okay, I let's don't want that one. I couldn't, <laughs> unless you know the, do you know your answer? Ask that question no, if you know the answer. No, I, I don't I don't, know. I don't. No. I don't. But let, yeah. let's ask people who are watching, how do you see the future of cinema? Do you think AI will change the way we engage with entertainment and movies how do you see the next five ten years unfolding as far as movies and films concerned people mm -hmm. have said that we will be able to make our own personal tailor-made movies at the beginning lynn was talking about her services saying that she mm -hmm. tailor makes her courses and her her lessons around what you want so it's a very personalized way of doing something so you like, for example, rom-coms, romantic comedies, and you want Hugh Grant to be in it with Renee Zell... What's her name? Zell Zellzweiger. Zellzweiger. Uh -huh. And you want them to be in Sweden. So you write oh, the God. outline for your film, and then the AI algorithm puts those actors in your personalized film only for you. Oh, no, that would be horrible, wouldn't it? It would give you no inspiration in life. Well, yes, because, again, it's just more of the same, you know? Mm. But you could have the actors you want in your, your own personalised movie doing what you want. Oh, no. I don't think I would like that, no. I mean, I think I look to, like a lot of people said, you know, like they want, when we were talking earlier about why do you go to the cinema? And we said we go for escapism, yeah? Then we want to escape our own imaginations when we go to the cinema, I think. And if the AI is just producing my own imagination, 
But what if you <laughs> I think were in I would the movie? be bored. <laughs> what if you escaped, if Lynn escaped in her own movie and you were a superhero saving humanity from the vampires that you hate and you saved everybody and you were in your own film? Wouldn't that be but great? You, but you do that anyway with movies, don't you? Because I was thinking like, because um, this was another question we were going to talk about, that do you ever catch yourself after watching movies that in your own life you suddenly remember a line from the movie and you transport the movie to your own life i do yeah. that all the time with shrek for example <laughs> with the kids that there's a line in shrek where he goes are we there yet are we there yet the donkey gets really annoying and so sometimes in our family, whenever we're going somewhere and one of us is a bit impatient, then we go, are we there yet? <laughs> <laughs> and we all know it's related to the, to the Shrek movie. movie. Yeah. But it's kind of like we act it out, you know. And we have a few, I have a few lines like that. Like we, we bring the movies into our own lives. And I think that way is more interesting. But for me to watch me being in a movie, nah. I don't or think so. bringing back dead actors you really like <gasps> John Wayne or Humphrey Bogart you could put them in a movie and write a synopsis and a plot for your favorite actor or actress who's dead to be in your movie it's another no. possibility because no. there's so there are so <laughs> many there's so much of John Wayne and these yeah, and Marlene Dietrich and there's mm -hmm. so much content there that AI could use that mm -hmm. to create new movies. Mm -hmm. Ignacio comment. has a good idea. He says maybe at home with AI you could have virtual glasses and you could choose different, not finals, but endings. endings different endings, Ignacio. yeah. Different endings. That could be fun. Yeah, a happy sometimes ending, you a get, sad yeah, ending. Yeah, because sometimes you get to the end of the movie and you're really disappointed in the ending. So you can say, don't like that one, give me an alternative. <laughs> well, it depends. I mean, some American movies are so predictable that American movies always end on a happy note with a happy ending. And British movies, mm. because we're so <laughs> depressed, <laughs> depressing and negative, we sometimes end in a bad, bad way. Uh -huh. The hero dies. Yeah. Dimitri Maybe says I would like... like I've just realized now, sorry, about wanting to be in a movie. You know, the kind of movie I would like to be in is like a Bollywood movie where they're all dancing and singing. I would like to be in that one. From India? Yeah. Yeah. Those kind of like musical movies. I would like to be part of that. Singing so and dancing. So if AI let me do that, that would be fun. Uh -huh. <laughs> put, so put Lynn in a Bollywood movie dancing like Fred Astaire, for example. Yeah. Or Ginger, no, Ginger, Ginger Rogers. Rogers. Sorry, Ginger Rogers. Ginger Rogers. That's it. <laughs> Lighting, Dimitri, is a very, very important part of the cinema. And if you notice, and I'm sure Anna said this to you, Lynn, that if you notice mm -hmm. how uh, the mood of the film um, is either very dark or it has a coloration on it, like The Godfather's yeah. very pastel mm -hmm. and very brown, uh -huh. the way it's filmed. Green and is science fiction, apparently. All the shades yeah, of green tones go. is to do with science fiction. Different like the filters, different uh -huh. lighting, how to light the subject and create atmosphere. It's a very, very complicated and technical mm -hmm. part of mm -hmm. filmmaking. Yeah. And Marlene says um, she hopes not. Yeah, me She's too. She's afraid uh, AI will influence our choices more and more and perhaps jeopardize the spontaneity. 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 Mm -hmm. of the movie culture yeah mm -hmm. but i'm looking forward to seeing what ai does to movies i think it's mm -hmm. time to to mm -hmm. move on and just not mm -hmm. go to see a flat screen It'd be nice to be in the mm -hmm. middle of the movie you are in the movie and you're wearing a headset and the movie's happening around you and you're in it wouldn't that be amazing mm -hmm. well i don't know because then you can't be with your girlfriend or boyfriend can you we're, having my, a romantic wife, date and sharing we, the popcorn <laughs> we don't we have different genres we don't watch the same thing <laughs> a virtual travel to space with all the equipment says ignathio yeah why not let's go to space uh -huh. okay, okay unfortunately we have to go to a different space because we've run out of time so mm -hmm. we want to thank you all for being with us and keeping us company it's been a lot of fun but before we go we'll tell you if this is your first time watching who we are, where we're from, 
and how you can get in touch with us if you'd like to have more of Lynn and who wouldn't that you can contact Lynn here. <laughs> That's right. You can contact me at putitlikethis.com. I'm an online teacher and I, um, I, I specialize in tailor making the courses to suit you. So I'm not giving you more of yourself. What my, That wasn't quite true what you were saying earlier. <laughs> what I normally do in my classes is I like you to try to find your own personal voice in English because sometimes when you learn a foreign language, you don't feel that you're quite yourself. So I like to find out wh what kind of English you're speaking in what situations and help to try to give you the English so that you can express the things that you really want to express, not the things that are in the textbook. <laughs> so I'm the opposite of AI. You are. Really. <laughs> I'm the real deal. <laughs> <laughs> you certainly are. Okay. So um, for, for me, I'm Craig from mansioningles.com where you can study English for free. And we have a podcast, which is every week at inglespodcast.com or wherever you listen to your podcasts. And that will also help you improve your English. And if you want to speak and be more confident and more fluent with your spoken English, go to the website englishcraig.com where you'll find ways to contact me for a short, free, with no obligation, 10 or 15 minute Zoom call. And I'll explain the courses to you and the dates and the times and the prices. And we start in April, the first week of April. We're starting a new month of courses. So get in touch. And thank you so much for watching. Until next mm -hmm. time, yep. go and watch a movie. Yeah, take care. Watch a movie. Think about take what care. we've said. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.